Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody. And welcome to this new Next Atlas webinar on Bailey 2024 Next Atlas Annual Report. This is the moment of the year in which uh, everybody tends to make a recap of what happened uh, in the past months uh, and to make some plans for uh, the future. Um, you know, in Next Atlas, we are more focused on the future. So this is what we will do today is uh, looking at the uh, free trends that we detected as particularly relevant for the year to come. We will anticipate our new trend report, which is already available on our website. Uh, I am uh, Eric Giordano. I'm head of business development for Next Atlas, and together with me from Dubai, Elena Marinoni, senior trend researcher. Hi, hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. So, as uh, some of you already know, uh, in Next Atlas, we are a kind of strange mixture between uh, data scientists and insight strategists. What we do is analyzing trends, detecting them, and analyzing through time by looking at data on one side, of course. So with the help of our data scientists that gather data on social media, and not only throughout the web, and uh, insight strategies that help us to understand uh, the data, read through this data, and understand what are the implications for different type of businesses. Uh, this makes us uh, define ourselves as foresight scientists. And uh, we do this by leveraging the power of early adopters. This means that uh, all the analysis of Next Atlas come from a pool of uh, profiles that are detected at global level of people that speaks before the majority and the mainstream of phenomena that will become then popular. Uh, not only we are following these 300,000 early adopters at global level, but we are discovering weak signals before they go mainstream, so anticipating so the debate on great topics that then become uh, relevant topics in different uh, industries. We use, of course, uh, uh, generative AI, uh, and in the last year uh, we use it a lot and we started to use it a lot because, of course, it has many potentialities and already many great results uh, combining the analysis of images and texts. And uh, we, um, we analyze uh, and uh, update our forecast uh, uh, every week to have always on prediction as global and main markets coverage. So coming to, today, uh, to this, today's summary, we have three chapters, as we said uh, in this uh, webinar, we will present just some of the phenomena that we uh, have ever highlighted for 2024. Uh, these uh, three uh, chapters are slightly different uh, from uh, uh, between each other. So the first two are closer to what uh, you already use, or, or at least uh, uh, those of you that already know us, already use of seeing in uh, Next Atlas, so the forecast for the next year and uh, uh, some statistics and, of course, business cases. The first one is similar, but with an important difference because it looks more uh, in the future. So it's more forward looking and also gives some perspective uh, that goes uh, also towards uh, mid and long term. And so Elena, uh, stage is yours uh, and we uh, expect, of course, uh, throughout all the webinar, your questions, uh, there will be a, a small session of uh, Q&A uh, at the end of uh, Elena's presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again, Eric. I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to take you through the highlights of our 2024 Next Atlas report. I will be commenting together these three micro trends. And the idea is, of course, to provide you with food for thoughts. Uh, on then how to leverage these uh, uh, trends, uh, uh, transforming them into uh, ideas, uh, brand activations, uh, new strategies or, or collapse. So the very first trend we are now going to delve into uh, results uh, somehow as a reaction uh, from the so-called scaling down attempt, which has characterized the 2023. This trend named the little threat culture uh, is about a desire for personal gratification. This uh, need for personal gratification is uh, resurfacing in the face of enduring economic constraints. In a nutshell, this trend is about consumers uh, who find relief in micro-dosing their gratification, treasuring the ordinary through small everyday rituals. 
Interestingly enough, the little threat culture trend is expected to grow by 36% over the next 12 months. Little threat culture as a trend is about, for instance, uh, indulging in uh, small pleasures, discovering uh, joy in the ordinary. It's about the beauty of simplicity that uh, uh, especially younger generations crave for. It's about uh, uh, morning rituals uh, that are evolving into curated experiences. Uh, whereas uh, semantics uh, wise, uh, for instance, the expression romanticize uh, your life is, uh, as you can see, uh, expected to increase um, in uh, popularity by 40% over the next 12 months. There is another term, glimmers, uh, meaning the micro moments of joy able to influence our central nervous system. Uh, glimmers are in a way uh, the positive uh, um, alternative to triggers. Uh, this term is expected to increase by 68% in popularity over the next uh, year. Let's have a look together at the data behind this uh, uh, trend. The trend prominently resonates with the Gen Z and millennials. The trend manifests uh, itself across uh, uh, different industries, but in particular, uh, it's relevant in uh, the food and beverage field, in uh, retail and in beauty and cosmetics. Uh, from the point of view of the value set of the people that are more engaged by this trend, um, it attracts uh, from narcissists uh, that are, of course, driven by a very strong need for personal gratification to a more uh, eco-conscious people. The little threat culture trend uh, is based on the need to reshift the ordinary by elevating it. How? It's quite simple. It's through small rituals. It's through small pleasures uh, in the everyday life, such as uh, 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 enjoying a coffee with a friend, uh, such as uh, uh, breakfast intended as an everyday ritual. Uh, or uh, uh, rituals uh, such as uh, slow walking uh, for a few kilometers to detox, uh, or dancing in the subway like uh, uh, a true queen uh, while commuting. This is actually exactly the case um, of the MAC Cosmetics campaign um, that maybe you have seen, that maybe you have heard, because it's really huge on TikTok also. Uh, and uh, basically, this campaign resonates with, with the TikTok uh, trend, one of the latest viral crazes. Uh, the, the campaign features uh, uh, the London model Sabrina Bassun dancing uh, like a true uh, next door star in the metro, uh, therefore uh, transforming uh, in a while the drudgery of daily commutes um, into something really joyful and delightful and entertainment and uh, somehow helping many to uh, cope with the social anxiety uh, through this liberating uh, ritual, which uh, looks like a small performance. Second insight connected to the little thread culture is the crave for pleasure sampling. Consumers are increasingly seeking ways to indulge in pleasures without overcommitting or spending too much. They crave bite-sized, easily digestible and affordable experiences that actually allow them to sample, to savor, and to move on effortless in case they don't like the product. This is happening especially in the makeup and in the food uh, industries. 
among the many brand cases worth mentioning a very interesting one is the general mills case study the brand has introduced recently the minis breakfast bundle to coincide with the launch of the new minis cereals and this uh, imaginative offering includes uh, actually a selection of a very playful mini kitchen items, as you can see from the picture, aimed at enhancing the everyday breakfast experience. Moving on now to the second macro trend, which is uh, uh, the age of messiness and which is expected to grow more and more, uh, more precisely um, by 15% predicted growth uh, for the next 12 months. Messiness is uh, uh, increasingly uh, being reframed as a, as a positive concept, um, as a form of self-expression. The trend is uh, uh, huge and it seems that after years of uh, saturated exposure to very highly curated and Instagram-friendly content, uh, users are now moving away from uh, what's uh, overly uh, polished and too perfect. Instead, they embrace uh, randomness, they embrace messiness as uh, a form of, uh, let's say, resistance um, against uh, pressures to perform and conform uh, to the standards from uh, uh, low effort aesthetics to more spontaneous or deliberately contradictory purchasing habits, consumers are finding relief in the uh, randomness and in anti-curation. This is the watchword of this trend. The age of messiness is about the rising popularity of mismatched outfits. It's about the growing popularity of Clattercore, a new TikTok trend. It's about uh, serendipity, uh, becoming a sought-after element in uh, um, an era which is more and more overwhelmed by algorithms and predictability. In the design field, interestingly enough, this trend translates with materials combinations that are able to create uh, unexpected uh, twists. Let's have a look at the data behind this second macro trend that will redefine the upcoming new year. So data-wise, the age of messiness will impact the Gen Z the most, followed by millennials. This trend will impact many industries, uh, in particular media and entertainment, uh, fashion and accessories, uh, advertising and branding. And the age of messiness will appeal uh, more and more to a range of uh, diverse consumers uh, with, again, narcissists uh, leading the way in their quest for self-expression. Uh, the age of messiness comes uh, with some correlated insights, uh, such as uh, uh, mindful mess, which is a play on uh, words that we have coined. Consumers are increasingly finding a sense of identity within spaces and aesthetics that might be viewed as weird, uh, delusional, uh, disordered. And here you can see the single components of the trend, tagwise how they are, um, how they have increased in popularity year on year. A brilliant example uh, of uh, this uh, weird uh, aesthetic that is gaining traction is uh, the Miu Miu Fall Winter 23 fashion show with uh, special regards uh, to this uh, hairstyling of the models by Guido Palau. It's, uh, an, uh, as you can see, very undone. It's a uh, frizzy art style. It's a bit bookish. It's a bit uh, librarian cool. And um, in our opinion, is really a brilliant example of an anti-beauty aesthetic. 
that can be regarded as a reaction to the super polished and sometimes uh, oppressive uh, uh, fashion industry uh, standards. It's a bit a break from the uh, always uh, curled, waved uh, and shiny long hair and uh, the pressure of uh, uh, filtered uh, Instagram friendly faces. Consumers love to navigate, as we know, between different realms, uh, whether it's mixing high fashion with streetwear or combining luxury items with everyday products. This has become already the norm. But in this dynamic playscape, the unexpected becomes the norm. And creativity is the currency. So here we can see the growth year on year of tags such as unstructured, contradictory, mischievous, eclectic. Let's have a look at uh, uh, a meaningful brand case to better understand how this trend and this insight is actually uh, manifesting itself. This is the case of Boucheron um, uh, Car Blanc. The high-end Parisian jewelry brand has decided to um, break the mold of conventional uh, high jewelry uh, design, which is... Uh, uh, as we know, often perceived as intimidating, especially for younger consumers. So uh, they have introduced this uh, collection, drawing inspiration from uh, the uh, unconventional Memphis group that is, as you know, of course, the 80s Italian design collective, the pioneers of the radical design movement, known for their uh, ironic, uh, colorful and avant-garde approach. The collection, uh, curiously enough, uh, includes pieces like scrunchies, like clothing jewels, and these uh, uh, innovations uh, uh, somehow are challenging traditionally uh, jewelry norms. Moving on now to our third uh, forecast, post-real curation. This is uh, uh, an emerging scenario about the ongoing transition from human-led uh, creation to AI-driven content generation. The role of humans in, um, um, in this uh, uh, emerging scenario is uh, uh, radically evolving. And it's evolving from uh, being uh, like genuine uh, creators to curators of fabricated outputs. As AI continually improves in mimicking human creativity, the very same concept of authorship, along with the age-old dichotomy between what is real and what is fake, becomes blurred. Humans now need new skill sets and frameworks to actually select, contextualize, and imbue AI-generated outputs with a human touch. Tags-wise, as you can see, the trend is characterized by expressions such as replacing humans, copyright infringements, fake images, three uh, expressions that will be experiencing uh, uh, triple-digit growth and uh, that uh, we are uh, monitoring on the next atlas. Generative AI blurs uh, authorship, it ignites uh, quite intricate uh, copyright uh, debates uh, online and offline. Uh, it's challenging human creativity's boundaries uh, and in uh, an AI-driven world, the authentic warmth of human touch becomes uh, uh, an irreplaceable premium added value. The increasing uh, prevalence of AI-generated content uh, is uh, leading to a new uh, rage against the machine uh, era. This is uh, apparent from the emergence of new competencies, ranging from the use of algo speak to circumvent censorship and boost visibility in algorithm-driven uh, feeds. 
but it also includes the application of data poisoning techniques all aimed at counteracting uh, AI's influence and cope with the AI and the privacy concerns from the uh, ethical point of view. Let's have a look at a couple of uh, examples uh, to better clarify this scenario and to see how it is actually uh, manifesting itself through uh, brand ideas, innovations, and so on. Nightshade is a tool that enables artists to embed alterations to their artworks pixels before um, online uploads. In, uh, if the art is uh, captured from an AI training the data set, these changes can actually disrupt the resulting model, leading to erratic outputs. By poisoning the training data with this tool, it can basically corrupt the subsequent versions of image uh, generating AI models, uh, such as DAL-E, such as Midjourney or Stable Diffusion. So leading to expertly flowed uh, outputs. Finally, um, driven by a fear of uh, homogenizing experiences, um, we are witnessing uh, a renewed appreciation for human curation. Human gatekeepers uh, are uh, poised to assume more and more the role of guardians. Uh, tasked with ensuring context-rich selections, more conscious choices from algorithmically generated uh, material. And here as a case, uh, we have uh, uh, Tinder that has uh, introduced this new feature named the Tinder Matchmaker. It's a tool that uh, reintegrates a friend test which lets friends and family recommend the profiles to another user to find the perfect match. Uh, Tinder Matchmaker maker brings your uh, circle of trust into your dating journey, reintroducing a sort of human validation to alleviate this coldness of uh, algorithm-driven uh, decisions. So, in conclusion, uh, it's time to recap a bit uh, the main points that we have covered. Uh, consumers are uh, for sure adapting their uh, need for gratification by treasuring uh, ordinary moments and minimizing uh, commitments, favoring uh, more flexible, bite-sized engagement uh, with uh, both the products and services. And this is uh, the first uh, uh, point. The second takeaway is that over-curation and uh, uh, homogeneity are out in favor of messiness and eclecticism. So we are witnessing this redefinition of the traditional markers of status. And we are witnessing also the redefinition of uh, overly polished uh, aesthetics. And the third takeaway is that in the age of post-driven creativity, uh, prompt-driven uh, creativity and uh, uh, new skill sets, uh, but also actually new ethical paradigms uh, will be more and more key um, in order to learn how to uh, interact and uh, collaborate with uh, AI. So we have uh, uh, reached the, our conclusions um, uh, actually in the extended version of the trend report. You uh, will uh, uh, also discover the industry specific uh, uh, key takeaways uh, resulting from these three emerging macro trends. Uh, so for the moment, I thank you very much. Eric is back, I suppose, to start our uh, Q&A session. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Elena. So uh, as we said, uh, 
uh, this is the moment uh, for your questions. We already have a couple of ones we can uh, we can answer to. Um, the first one comes from uh, Marta. I would say it's a, a meta question because what is the contribution of AI to this report? Um, I can answer to that. Uh, I believe that um, we are um, quite uh, in line with what uh, Elena was saying uh, uh, regarding uh, this uh, part of human gatekeeping, uh, because this is the way we have been working from the beginning in Next Atlas. So there has always been a lot of data analysis in Next Atlas to detect trends and to measure them through time. In the last year, generative AI started to um, contribute a lot uh, in, to our analysis and for the one of you that are, have already been using Generate, uh, it's quite uh, obvious. But there's always, let's say, uh, a moment in which uh, there are some human that has to take a decision and consider what is emerging from the analysis. This happens uh, in Nexus, for example, where in the validation of um, uh, of the all the findings that are emerging from the analysis, the facts, insights, and trends that uh, you have seen in this report and in our materials in general. And also, for example, in the curation of this report, which is a selection, a curated selection of phenomena that are emerging through our AI driven uh, machine. So let's say that uh, there's a huge work that is made by the machine, but uh, a very, very important clue at the end uh, that is given by human curation uh, and uh, our insight team. Um, then uh, we have a second question that comes from uh, Olga uh, that uh, is asking, uh, what does core core mean? I believe it's uh, one of the keywords that were uh, uh, rising in one of the of the trends. In the second, uh, in the second okay. trend, the age of the messiness, this was one of the tag that we have highlighted. Uh, well, in a nutshell, core core is uh, um, a video, a style of video editing, let's say. Uh, very short uh, clips, uh, meaning uh, 20 or 30 seconds. Uh, and this video result uh, from a very messy uh, combination of uh, memes, uh, uh, movie scenes, uh, uh, celebrity interviews, uh, uh, video games, and so on. And uh, in, the, in the background, there is a, this super melancholic uh, uh, melody. And uh, by extension, uh, core core, which is also a huge trend on uh, TikTok, uh, um, is is um, considered uh, uh, the art form of Gen Z. Okay, thank you, thank you, Elena. Uh, there are uh, still a few uh, a few questions, uh, but uh, I believe uh, uh, since time is running out, uh, we will answer to this question by by email to each one of you. Uh, so uh, let's say wrapping up this uh, this session, what we can still say is that uh, um, uh, in the report uh, uh, there will, you will find uh, more elements than the one that we had the time to present uh, today. So uh, you will find uh, more insights, uh, more case studies. Uh, uh, so not only the ones that uh, Elena has uh, presented, and uh, as Elena was anticipating, also some recommendation that is uh, industry specific, uh, uh, meaning that uh, as always the phenomena that we are measuring in some cases they are very single industry specific, but in most cases they have impacts uh, in different fields. So there are some recommendation for uh, uh, industries uh, uh, as uh, as yours. And uh, again, we thank you everybody for uh, um, this uh, participation and this great partic participation today. And we hope to see you soon and speak uh, soon with you. Bye-bye, see you, thank you. <laughs>